Hi and welcome. Today we will look at a new topic called how to use OWASP correctly. So I see many people using OWASP top 10, which is really good. However, I also see many people only using OWASP top 10, which is not that good again. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the page OWASP.org to its full potential. I'm going to show you how to find things on the OWASP the uh, .org site and we will look at different various parts to give you a good brief introduction to how to use OS correctly. All right, so I'm already on OS.org, the web page, <clears throat> and on the front page we see stuff like uh, projects, chapters, events and about, okay? If you scroll down the page, which is the front page, we will see whatever they felt was the newest news to give us and that is really good. However, what I'm going to focus on right now is the link called projects in the top. If we just hover <coughs> projects, we will see stuff like OS top 10 as the very first link, propensity track, juice shop, mobile security testing guide, and so on. However, OS have, have a lot of different projects that, that is not listed on this list. So let's hover the, uh, the word projects and click browse all projects. On this page, we will see, we scroll down a bit, projects for good, we can read about different kind of projects and so on, but if you scroll down a bit, we will reach to a point called flagship projects. Flagship projects is the project that you will probably use the most. Keep in mind that OS top 10, which is one of the flagship projects, one of many flagship projects. Probably most of you only know that project and recognizes it. Maybe a good deal of you also know the ASVS security standard from OWASP. <clears throat> and maybe some of you even heard about something called Juice Shop. So that's the three top projects I tend to see people know. Now, this is, of course, just a short video about OS and how to use it. So let me just click on one of the links that I really like, which is called the OS Cheat Sheet Series. If you click on this link, you will get to this page that will tell you that the Cheat Sheet Series is available on the web page. There we go. So let's click on the link and go to the Cheat Sheet Series. Uh, part. It's a very difficult thing to say cheat seed series three times in a row. All right. So first of all, we will see uh, some some project leaders and some links and stuff like that. And this is the cheat sheet series. And yeah, okay. So what is the cheat sheet series? Now, many developers and people that, you know, write code or is just interested in security <clears throat> could benefit a lot from knowing how to find the cheat sheets on OS. Okay, so you might even know they said NIST standards. NIST is a bit more abstract and doesn't give you the same amount of code and practical implementations as OS does. So if you go to let's say the cheat sheet and click on the link here, it will open a lot of different things you can click on. Okay. So the very first one is going to be called Ajax Security. Just out of the blue, it's just one topic, Ajax Security, no particular order. Well, it is sorted by the alphabetic order. So you can just say, okay, so I'm developing a, 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 a web application and I'm doing something with Ajax, I'm con consuming a REST API. Okay, so, for, so let's click the link, Ajax Security. A small introduction will tell you about what this is all about and talk about client side and don't use the eval, uh, eval which is uh, the first thing you should never do. And then it will tell you very, very quickly that you should not rely on, on client side logic for security and then rely on client side business logic and etc. All right. So if you scroll down a bit, we can see that the very first thing it tells you about is the server side. You have to use cross site request forgery tokens. And if you don't know exactly what that is, well, no alarm 
for Pioneer or anything, just click the link, cross over Chris Forgery, Prevention Cheat Sheet, and then you will get to the other cheat sheet, which is also just a tad down if you look here with a mouse right here. Okay, so this is the cheat sheet for cross site request forgery prevention. So you can read about what it is and some big interesting points here that I really suggest you read and click the links if you're not sure what it means. And then it will talk about <coughs> token based migration and using building or existing implementations and so on and so on. If you scroll down a bit, you will find stuff like examples that will tell you that every time you have some sort of uh, HTML formula, um, you need some sort of input field <coughs> that contains your cross off request for your token, which in this case is a long, this very long, well, base64 encoded, I can see this, string that will be sent to the server every time you submit the form. The whole point of a cross request forgery is to be regenerated for every HTTP request, so you cannot have the cross-site request forgery vulnerability happen. And <clears throat> if you continue reading, you will get to the defense depth techniques and so on and so on. So that is just the first link, and I'm already beginning to feel this video could become really, really long. However, what I suggest you do is just take one at a time and, and say, okay, so I'm a developer, I need to develop an application, and what we're doing is we are focusing on developing a access control model or access control hmm, matrix or something like that. Well, okay, so we're in luck. There is something called access control here on OS. Let's click it. <clears throat> and what it kind of tells you is that, hmm, uh, what is an authorization and the requested action is permitted at the time for, for this identity. Okay, so if you just read this small text, and then comes to the part, what is access control? And then think about role-based access control, or you might even think about attribute-based access control or organization-based access control and so on and so on. So there is a certain amount of text telling you the theory behind the different kind of things you need to worry about less if you know how to find the OSP cheat sheet series. All right, so let's go back to the OSP page again. <clears throat> Going to the project page and click browse all projects. Go down a bit and we can see stuff like, so you wanna do something with cloud, cloud native application security top 10. So let's click the link. So basically it tells you that we should read the text and basically understand what this is all about. So another thing could be like, okay, so I wanna do mobile security testing guide, all right then. <clears throat> then you click the link and read whatever text there is and follow the links in order to get to the part that you need to know. So apart from all the normal stuff from the OS top 10 and, and stuff like that, we also have something called the OS web security testing guide. Very interesting part. So if we go to the stable uh, version by clicking on the stable link, we'll get to this very large table of content. So scrolling down a bit, we will discover that there is five big uh, headings. And in the top, it will talk about, let's see, the OS testing project, principle of testing, and so on, threat modeling, which is very important that you understand how to create a good threat model and risk assessment before you write the code. Also talks about source code review, penetration testing, mm, but probably more important of all, if you scroll down just a bit, it begins to talk about web application security testing. And then you begin to see stuff like fingerprinting web server, mm, review web page content for information leakage, Whenever you see something that you might think, oh, this, this is for me, I need to use this. Well, you just by all means, click the link. You can also say like, okay, I wanna test my HTTP method. Well, click the link, let's see what happens. So basically it, it tells you about, well, 
what this is all about and the different kind of methods you need to be aware of and how to test it and 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 they want to do let's see they want to use the nmap scanner that's very good so if you don't know the nmap scanner or the, the program called lmap i suggest you go and search for google for nmap it's a network mapper it's a scanner and looks for basically open pores and stuff like that but it can do many other things like sending scripts and testing http methods like you just see here so I want to keep this video short and go just go back to the overall projects and browse all projects again and then scroll down now this was a flagship project you also have lab projects i really suggest that you look at on, on some of these there's something called mobile security or find security box or benchmark or, or automated threat to web applications and so on incubator projects and lots of them Project needed uh, needing website updates and so on and so on. If you only want to focus on the flagship projects, I really suggest that you at, at least check out the A ASVS, the Cheat Series series, the Juice Shop, the mobile security testing, because who's going to just develop anything that's not mobile support, right? Also, think about the security knowledge framework the OS top 10 as a one of the primers and the web security testing guide. When you're done with that, consider clicking some of the other links and maybe even go to NIST to read upon, up upon more interesting security facts. So for now, in this video, this was just a brief introduction to how to use OS correctly. And there are many, many different ways that you can <coughs> go into the OS projects and browse them and use whatever things that is most necessary for you. I tried to cover a more broad perspective from this video, so I hope that you will uh, watch some of my other videos here on YouTube, and please subscribe and click the bell, and leave a comment if you like the video, and like the video as well. All right again, bye.